Ahoy there, fellow pirates. And shut up. I've got a lot to cover today because I'm going over the Sea of Thieves iceberg made by user Monolithic on Reddit. If you don't know about how the iceberg format works, basically it's a picture of an iceberg with words written on it. The words represent facts, and the further down the iceberg they are, the more obscure and supposedly sinister the fact is. But trust me, there will be no forced spookiness in this video. I can assure you of that. One last thing before I start, big thank you to Chalak Plaza for helping me get all of the shots in this video. Above the iceberg, Pirate Legend. Pirate Legend is the rank you are awarded for reaching rank 50 in three of the game's factions. Though it used to be a massive grind, it's now a much shorter massive grind. World Events World Events spawn all around the server on various islands. The comprehensive list of these World Events is Skeleton Forts, Skeleton Fleets, Ghost Fleets, Ashen Lords, and the Fort of Fortune, as well as the Kraken, which is included as only one will spawn when no World Events are active, and therefore is itself classed as a World Event. Cursed Cannonballs Cursed Cannonballs are cannonballs which are cursed, but do they curse you? No, they curse other crews, unfortunate enough to be targeted by them. They come in two classic colours of purple and green, which deal status effects to ships and players respectively. Want to stop a ship in its tracks? Hit it with an anchor ball. Want to stop those pesky repairmen? Force them to take a nap with a weary ball. Ghost Cannonballs can also be considered cursed cannonballs. The Red Sea when you try to leave the Sea of Thieves, you will soon find yourself in the Red Sea, where your ship will promptly spring a few leaks and sink. If you keep swimming, you'll respawn on your active ship. One good way of reaching the Red Sea is to have an incompetent player steer your ship. Sword Lunge, Dash and Slide A sword lunge can be performed by doing a charged hit with your cutlass. It will cause you to dash forwards. If this is done into water, you can get a fast set off when swimming. You can speed this up further by blocking whilst charging your lunge. This allows you to retain your mobility whilst charging, and you can fly pretty far forwards by jumping during the lunge. Initial release and reviews The game got a lot of negative reviews when it first came out because there was no stuff to do and no end goal. Now there's more stuff to do and no end goal, and the game has a lot more substance to it. Athena Chests, Chest of Legends The Athena Chest is a highly sought after chest, not so much because it sells for a lot, it doesn't, but more because it's difficult to get and it's fun to cheekily steal them from under other players' noses. Sword Hopping Blocking with your sword and jumping in a direction allows you to dodge in that direction. It's very useful when you're on the defensive, as you can manipulate the distance between yourself and your enemy. You can also hop forwards past the enemy player if you're cornered. Hull Hole Tears When your ship's hull is damaged, a hole will appear in it. The size of said hole will depend on how the hull was damaged, and whether it was already damaged. Tucking Tucking is the act of hiding on another person's ship. This could be done for a few reasons, such as stealing a bit of their loot, or spying on their activity. Using the free hide emote will allow your name tag to be hidden from all other players. The Athena Hideout The Athena Hideout can be accessed by Pirate Legends by playing We Shall Sail Together in a specific spot in any tavern. This will open the way for any pirates, including non-pirate legends. The Hideout is where you get Athena-related items and quests. Glorious Sea Dog the Sea Dogs are a faction in the Sea of Thieves, based around the arena. Glorious Sea Dogs are people who have played a lot of arena, so not me. The Ebon Pistol The Ebon Pistol is a pistol which can only be obtained by travelling back in time and watching a livestream. Alternatively, you can hopefully grab it in a future livestream. Nukes, Stronghold Kegs Stronghold Kegs are like normal kegs, but chunky. If one of these explodes in your ship, it's pretty much done for, unless you have a mass bailing force. I barely survived this keg once, I was just about able to bail enough water out of the ship on my own before my crewmate came to repair. Buckets of sick. If you eat a worm or some raw meat, or if you drink too much grog, you'll be sick. If you hold out an empty bucket, your grotesque green vomit will fill it up. You can then throw it in some unfortunate pirate's face. What transpires after is a filthy party of two people continuously ejecting their disgusting sick all over each other's faces. PvP versus PvE argument. Some people think that there should be PvE servers in the game. Those people have an incorrect opinion. Above the waves. Whilst it's still tedious to go through, these tidbits of knowledge about the game are mildly more obscure than what I've covered so far. Ship Death Bell. This is the sound effect that plays when your ship passes the point of no return and sinks to the bottom of the ocean. Take more care next time. I noticed. Okay, fucking great. Harpoon and anchor turns. 
A ship's harpoon can be used to perform a quick turn if there's something to latch onto. If you drop your anchor whilst travelling at a reasonably quick pace, you can perform a full 180 degree turn in open waters very quickly. Sloops are fast against the wind. If you're on a sloop and a galleon or brigantine shows up to sink you, sail against the wind and point your sails forwards. A galleon will sail like a brick in these conditions, whilst you escape their grasp. Getting black screened. If your pirate gets stuck or something weird happens, you'll get a brief black screen and respawn on your ship. Server merging. When your current session gets a bit too quiet, servers will be merged together. You might see some weird things during this. Flag of the Reaper's Mark. The Flag of the Reaper's Mark exposes your location on everyone's map and you'll be more likely to run into trouble. It's much more chaotic. Death Spiraling. If you've immobilized an enemy ship, a good tactic is to enter a death spiral around them. Adjust your wheel and regulate your speed and you'll successfully circle the enemy ship whilst firing mini cannonballs at them. The Ancients. The Ancients are responsible for the crazy rock paintings found around the Sea of Thieves. They lived there long before us pirates came along. Maiden Voyage, Hidden Key and Stash The Maiden Voyage features a trapdoor to the hold of the magpie's wing, which is filled with riches. You have to find the key to access it though. Ancient Skeletons Ancient Skeletons are a rare skeleton which drop ancient coins upon death. In my 900 or so hours in the game, I've only encountered about 4 or 5 I think. Cursed Chest Transport Strats Cursed chests can wreak havoc with your ship when you're sailing. The chest of sorrow will fill up your ship with water when it cries, no matter where it's been placed. One workaround is to have someone hold the chest at the bottom of your ship's ladder. In my opinion, it's easier just to bail out the water. The best place to put a chest of rage is on the tip of the bowsprit, so when it goes off, it'll only set the bowsprit ablaze. Alternatively, you can make a bit of a swimming pool in your ship and store it in there. Harpooning the Meg. Latching your ship's harpoon onto the Megalodon makes the Meg pull you forwards at a rapid pace. It's much fun. Why have you done this? Stop it! Kraken spawn conditions. <laughs> Silly chart. I already explained that only one Kraken can spawn, and only when there's no other world events on. Mermaid and Siren gems sell anywhere. Mermaid and Siren Gems can be sold to any faction except Athena's Fortune, but they are accepted by the Hunter's Call, so they're useful for Hunter's Call reputation. Below the waves. Deeper we go. Here are some more facts you probably already know. Deck Shots. When you fire yourself out of a cannon and land on the deck of another crew's ship, or even your own ship, this is a deck shot. <laughs> I did that. Shores of Gold Curse. When you complete every commendation for every tall tale in the game, you win the gold curse. It's a massive grind, and I have it. Hit Reg is a joke. Hit Reg is pretty bad in the game. Often shots seem like they should have landed, when according to the server they didn't land. I've never seen much evidence for this, but that's because I suck at hitting shots anyway. Except for one time, which you'll see in a minute. I killed it, not you. I cut- I- no, what? no, that was me! I killed it. No! No, I killed it. I got the little symbol that says I hit it. I got the little symbol that said I hit it. Okay, I think okay. you, you shot a different scully, clearly. No, I- <laughs> you're messing with me, right? No, I I was the one that killed it. No, I specifically aimed past, I got the little thing, the legs went down. 150% it was me. You shut your face. Default field of view settings. By default the field of view is set to 78. Usually, when I teach someone new how to play the game, the first thing I tell them to do is to go into their settings and set the field of view to 90. Iron Sights Pistols Some pistol skins have better sights than others. The best pistol for iron sights is the mercenary pistol. Watch this. Oh, what a shot! What a shot! Nice! Ashen Wind Skull Flamethrower the Ashen Wind Skull has a flamethrower-like function. It has high damage and can obviously set things on fire. Music boxes. There is a music box in every tavern which can be interacted with to play a tune. There's also a music box in the Wild Rose Doll Tale. You can play this music box whilst holding it to play a unique tune. Loot sprinting and juggling. Many impatient pirates don't like having to walk everywhere with loot, so they drop the loot, sprint, and pick it up as they start sprinting. This is a decent compromise. I only use it whilst swimming, personally. 
Emissary tables gauge server populations. Every emissary table indicates how many ships there are on the server flying that specific emissary flag. It does this with cute little models of wooden ships. This can be used to estimate how active the server is. Ships near sinking groan. Sound is important in video games and Sea of Thieves is no exception. The creaking of your ship is a good indicator that you should probably bail the ship. If you're deaf, you can now look out for rats on the deck. Cursed sails update an event. This update added skeleton ships, cursed cannonballs, the brigantine and alliances. If you're not happy with that list you can read the patch notes. It also featured a time limited quest where you would sink a skeleton ship at a set place and time. Also some lore related stuff happened but I can't be bothered to cover that. Basically this lady turned into a skeleton and built reaper's hideout or something, I don't know. Thieves Haven. Thieves Haven is an island, it's a pretty fancy island. Uh, did you know that the Pirate Lord and his crew, the first people to enter the Sea of Thieves, spent their first night at Thieves Haven? Box of Wondrous Secrets The Box of Wondrous Secrets is a very rare spawn which can only be found in the Devil's Roar. It spawns randomly on beaches and is worth 25,000 coins. Mmm, fancy! Sell it to Grace Morrow at Morrow's Peak Outpost if you find it. Or to the Reaper's Hideout if you want to risk that. Never keep kegs in the crow's nest. Never keep kegs on your ship, it never goes well. Only time I'd do this is if I have nothing to lose, or if I'm up against a ship I think can only be beaten with a kegging. I put Athena's what? kegs in the crow's nest, but my plan is to get rid of them if players show up. Sometimes it goes horribly wrong though. I'm on my way. Rock and Cave Paintings Paintings can be found on rocks on most islands. These paintings were made by the ancients, who must have used some very high quality paint for it to last so many years. Paintings can tell us things about the ancients, like the creatures they worshipped. Server Population Limit Sea of Thieves servers are generally going to have a maximum of 5 active player ships in them, although it can supposedly go up to 6. In such a big map, it makes running into another crew reasonably rare, but also a permanent concern. Cross-promotion ship set. If Rare wants to promote another game for whatever reason, they will often put a ship set in the Sea of Thieves to promote this other game. This includes State of Decay, Gears of War, Battletoads, Banjo-Kazooie, Borderlands, and Halo. Uncharted Islands. There are four Uncharted Islands on the seas, one at K9, one at N13 which features in some tall tales, as well as the glorious Sea Dogs Tavern, and one which I didn't consider at first, Tribute Peak. The Reaper's Hideout used to be a fairly standard Uncharted Island before it became what it is today. Chest contents are cursed. Much of the treasure in the Sea of Thieves is cursed, which is why the Pirate Lord used fancy metal to lock it away in chests. Unfortunately, he was betrayed by a member of his crew who made copies of the keys so the chests could be accessed by people other than the Pirate Lord. That's where the Gold Hoarders, as well as the Gold Hoarder, came from. That's about as oversimplified as I can put it. The Barrel Disguise Emote The Barrel Disguise allows players to pretend to be a barrel. It was introduced in Season 2, and there's currently no way to obtain it. Coral Fortress The Coral Fortress is where you go in the tall tale Dark Brethren. It's got coral, and it's a fortress. The Depths Oh goodness, we're getting to the point now where I have to do research. Ugh. Sloop Invulnerability Point There is a certain area of the sloop which if hit by a cannonball, no damage is done. This area is the cannonball barrels. If a cannonball hits a barrel, it won't do any damage to the ship. This is only powerful on the sloop, as only the sloop has barrels on deck. Speed Swapping Some people think that you can quickly shoot one weapon and then immediately swap to the other and fire that really quickly. But there's no such thing as speed swapping, it's impossible to reduce the delay between shots. Ladder Splash Sounds When someone grabs your ship's ladder, a quiet splash sound can be heard, which can be very useful. Before Season 5, it was possible to nullify the splash sound by either blocking with your sword, or aiming down the sides when grabbing the ladder, or by grabbing the ladder from underwater. Legendary Curse the Legendary Curse is a curse awarded for reaching Tier 100 in Season 1. It could only be claimed by Pirate Legends, however. The Mano War The Mano War is a ship concept by the community. It's got lots and lots of people, and it's very, very scary, and would definitely be a pain in the arse to be captain of. And to fight. The Whale Lord 
The Whale Lord is a Pokemon based on the real life animal, the whale, and it was worshipped by the ancients or something, I'm not entirely sure, but I know people worship it, that's for sure. I assume it also owns some land somewhere, otherwise it wouldn't be a lord. Slanted ground negates fall damage. This goes for a lot of video games, but falling into a slanted surface can negate your fall damage. If there's no slanted surface to land on, it can alternatively break your fall using the blunder bomb. Keg torpedoes. This man accidentally turns a keg into a very fast torpedo on a stream. Wait, where'd it go? <laughs> Glitterbeard journals. Glitterbeard journals can be found throughout the Sea of Thieves. They document the life of Glitterbeard the Pirate as he discovers what the Sea of Thieves has to offer. They were put in the game for a rare employee, James White, who sadly passed away in March of 2021. The Killer Whale. Leveling up to level 50 with the Hunter's Call can unlock you the Killer Whale ship set. This ship set is themed after Merrick's ship set, Merrick being the leader of the Hunter's Call. The original Killer Whale is now the shipwreck which makes the structure for the Reaper's hideout. Reload other ammo crates with other ammo crates. As you may know, there are ammo crates in Sea of Thieves which have a capacity of 50 ammo. They can be refilled with the infinite static ammo crates found on islands and your ship. Pistol skins fire differently. Technically, every pistol skin fires the exact same, but what's different is the sights on a pistol. A blurbs video showcases this perfectly, and also inspired me to use the mercenary pistol, which has a beautiful iron sight on it. Obsidian item code giveaways. Obsidian item codes are given away by streamers. They are codes used to obtain the obsidian six pack of items. All obsidian shipped cosmetics are currently not possible to obtain, except the capstan I believe. Other obsidian items could be obtained by pre-ordering the game. Storms in the wilds are worse. I'm fairly sure this is a myth. I've tried researching it and found nothing about it. I've never noticed any difference in the storm's properties between the wilds and other regions myself. Keg launching. Watch this. Land sharks. Oh my god, that shark is on land. Despite having no legs, it has destroyed the meaning of evolution. Sadly, this has been patched. Sword lunge cancelling. When you're charging a sword lunge and something damages you, your lunge will be cancelled. Wait, you meant some weird PvP trick or method or something like that, didn't you? Well, you've come to the wrong person to teach you advanced PvP tips. Ship flipping, flying ships. Sometimes physics goes out the window in Sea of Thieves, and ships can be seen flying around, because something weird happened. Here's a clip where someone's ship went upside down too. The Insider Program Joining the Insider Program allows you to play preview builds of the game. Playing for a certain number of weeks allows you to unlock this absolutely spiffing ship cosmetic set. Beard Errors When your game decides that it doesn't want to work, you get a beard error. I won't list them all because there's a lot, but the error is always something beard, and it will change depending on the reason why you can't play the game. One I think we've all seen is Lazy Beard, which shows up when you're AFK too long. There's also this one I got once, where the address has fallen off the crate, which had the error message Bernard Beard. Unofficial flag meanings. The community has given meanings to various flags, such as the Jolly Roger being a sign that you're friendly, whereas the pride flag indicates you're aggressive. It's quite unfortunate for anyone who wants to spread pride and diversity in the Sea of Thieves. Alliance servers. Sometimes some very special people make a very special server where they all play together using a VPN to get in the same server or something. And then they're all safe and they can make lots of money money money. Flying Meg. Megs can fly. Look, watch. I'm not even on the phone right now, I'm falling behind you. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Get on the ship! Get on the ship! All right, how far through am I? Oh, only halfway. Brilliant. God help me. Lower depths. We're getting pretty deep now, lads. Hallower MCM LXX. The first pirate to find himself on the Ferry of the Damned in the Technical Alpha was Hallower 1980. 
An easter egg has been left for this player on the Ferry of the Damned. Etched into the wall is Hallower MCMLXXX. MCMLXXX being Roman numerals for 1980. Griffin and the skin on banana. This refers to a man at E3 in 2017 who ate a banana with the skin on, and it made quite a spectacular crunch sound. There's an easter egg for this moment at Marauder's Arch. Various commemorative easter eggs. The Sea of Thieves is littered with easter eggs for various pirates, most of whom are notable players from the technical alpha. The old double gunner speed. Double gunners used to be able to fire one shot from one weapon and then immediately fire again from their other weapon. This got fixed thankfully. I'm a cutlass and pistol guy. Runes. A few runes were shown in the Sea of Thieves social media pages, which teased the pirate's life update. Each rune was translated into a word using images featuring hidden runes, which were then used to decipher vague clues as to what the next update would be about. At least the merfolk and siren aspects of the update anyway. Look, you're talking to the wrong person for this. Go ask Captain Falcor, he'll have a video on it. Unused cosmetic items. I'm not too sure if this means anything specific, but I imagine there are a few cosmetic items which never got past the design stage. Boarding X. The Boarding X is a concept suggestion by Robotic Bobio. The idea of the Boarding X was to be another weapon type which could be used to scale the sides of enemy ships and could then be used to make holes in the ship's hull whilst on board. Crabs. There are no crabs in Sea of Thieves, which is a disgrace, as they are referenced to in emotes, costumes, and there's one adorable little crab which cameos in every cinematic trailer for the game. They would look rather good as a cute pet. Speed digging. The idea of speed digging was to put away your shovel whilst digging and pull it out again to dig again. This would make you dig faster by a pretty small margin. It's been patched recently, however. Much to the frustration of some pirates whose muscle memory still has them trying to speed dig. Silent repairs. It was possible to repair your ship silently, sort of. Only the first bang of the repair can be heard if you held out the wood before or during the repair. Portal hopping. If you're a level 5 reaper with no ships left to sink but lots of supplies, you can put down a pirate's life tall tale and travel through the portal. Once you've been through the tunnels of the damned, cancel the tall tale and you'll find yourself in a new server. Death tax. When your ship gets sunk, you'll respawn pretty close to where you were when you sank. On a second sink, you'll respawn at a greater distance away, and so on. Silver Blade Sets The Silver Blade set can be obtained by members of the Insider program. People slowly earn parts of the set every few weeks as they play the Insider program. Shrouded Ghost is real. I'd have to see it to believe it, unfortunately. The North Star The North Star is a star in the Sea of Thieves which is located to the north. It's extra bright. I believe it's part of the constellation Old Mother, unlike in real life where it's part of the constellation Ursa Minor, also known as the Little Dipper or Little Bear. The sea is 100 meters deep. Swimming down in the game only gets you so far. There's eventually an invisible barrier, with the exception of in the Sunken Pearl, Shrines and Treasuries, where you can swim extra far down. Perhaps the bottom of the sea in these areas is 100 meters down, which would imply the entire sea has this depth. Ship's Crest and Ship Naming Many players want a ship naming system to be added. The ship name could be placed somewhere on the hull or above the door to the captain's quarters on a galleon. Many also want to be able to make a ship's crest. Loot and Law Sales The Loot and Law Sales can be equipped from the ship customization chest, but requires to be host on the Sea of Thieves game show called Loot and Law by the Frosty. Yeah, not too difficult to get then. Underneath Reaper's Hideout. What's under that big scary door at Reaper's Hideout? I don't know, and I can't be bothered to find out because it's probably weird and complicated. Bare feet are quieter than boots and shoes. Here's a comparison. Okay, yeah, they sound pretty much the same. Continue to wear shoes for everyone else's sake. No one wants to stare at your dreadful feet. Well, maybe some people do, but the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Disappearing wind trail glitch. Sometimes your game might glitch out and you won't be able to see the wind trails around your sail. I've had this happen to me and I just put a flag up to solve the issue. Dig speed changes with crew size. Dig speed is faster for smaller crews. This implies larger crews are weaker. Which they are. The even lower depths. I, I don't really know what to name these stages. Hmm. Harpoon Range Glitch 
I'm not fully sure what this means, but I found this YouTube video with a bloody long harpoon, a delightful sound quality to soothe your eardrums. That's what? Jack Sparrow costume versus character select. There's Captain Jack Sparrow costume in the game. I suppose some people want to actually play as Captain Jack. Hmm. I feel bad for every pirate whose player wants rid of them for a clone of Johnny Depp. Campfire lighting methods. Campfires can be lit with a lantern, but they can also be lit by striking it with your sword. It's completely inefficient to do so, but it's a cool detail nonetheless. There we go. Female Mysterious Stranger. Most pirates know of the Mysterious Stranger, but before the anniversary update, there were two Mysterious Strangers, George and Gloria. They got rid of Gloria because they're sexist. Reaper's Bones Flag The Reaper's Bones Flag is the emissary flag for the Reaper's Bones, unless this is referencing the Reaper's Faction Flag that no one uses, which I assume it is. Spyglass Dick Glitch Sometimes a glitch can occur that makes your spyglass... Y you know, looks like... Y you see it, don't you? We all, we all do. The spyglass represents the pirate having an enormous cock. Original Maiden Voyage map. Not a clue what this is referring to, sorry. I could ask the Reddit user, but I can't be bothered. Kraken cries at 3am. Right on schedule. Banana quest and sales. This is a fairly big topic, but in March of 2018, the community was challenged to solve some puzzles and uncover clues to fill out a template known as The Passage. The first crews to do this from each participating region would take part in the ultimate test. This included a crew named the Germans from Germany. Unfortunately, the French crew won and were awarded with four very expensive golden bananas for each of them. Winners also win the golden banana sales. Super Bunny Hopping Super Bunny Hopping can be achieved with a sword lunge and then spamming the jump button. Make sure you hit something such as a crate of bottles with the sword lunge so that you don't get the exhausted animation for missing your lunge. Most jumps I got, unfortunately, was just one. But here's someone doing it properly. The Athena Cube There's a big bright cube under Dagger Tooth Outpost. It acts as the bright gateway to the Athena's hideouts. Dagger Tooth Outpost Floor Clip The big bright cube could be accessed in the past by walking on this spot next to Dagger Tooth Outpost. 2015 E3 gameplay footage. The Sea of Thieves trailer from E3 2015 featured a gameplay from an early version of the game. It had an early version of Cannon Cove, as well as some very dramatic PvP galleon combat. On a generally bland, lifeless sea, the gameplay looks phenomenal, and looks like it's probably been rendered to look better than the actual game. Riddles are occasionally wrong. Riddles are frustrating, and it's a lot of work for one chest containing mediocre items. However, I haven't ever experienced a riddle that's completely wrong, nor can I find anything about this on the interwebs. Barrel Inventory Spawn Times Barrels refill their inventories every 30 minutes after server restart. Island Resetting Dying at an island resets its animals, which is a good idea if you're collecting animals for the Merchant Alliance. I haven't really tested this myself, but I'm not sure if it's been patched. Tridents can push ships. Correct. Cook content. There's been a lot of changes to Sea of Thieves over time, such as how chests were previously delivered to the shipwright in the technical alpha. There was also a time-limited campaign during the Cursed Cruise event. The arena was previously about digging up these arena chests based on X marks the spot maps. The Old World. The Sea of Thieves map has evolved slowly over time, and islands have moved around a bit since the technical alpha back in 2016, and before that the developers will have played even earlier versions of the map. In the old old footage from 2014, Plunder Outpost and Smuggler's Bay are both visible. The deeper, deeper, deep depths. Okay. Kegs don't cluster in water. Uh, yeah. There you go. They don't. The Gunboat, Junk, Frigate, and Carrack. These are all types of ships which have been proposed to the developers by the community. Why you would want to make the game more complicated with more ship types is beyond me, although I admit a one-player ship would be very interesting to see, if not a bit lonely. It would also be cool to have a ship with a cannon on the front or rear, I suppose. Deckhand Cosmetics If one crew member has a special cosmetic outfit, it will unlock similar deckhand versions of this cosmetic for the crewmates. 
Hiding treasure in the helm. This is easiest to demonstrate. Placing an item inside the helm essentially hides it, so if some cheeky pirate is throwing your loot overboard, they'll most likely miss anything hidden in the helm. The brig is the fastest ship. The brig is actually the fastest ship in the game. In wind conditions known as beam reach, which is a crosswind with your sails at full billow, the speed of the brigantine exceeds the top speed of the galleon, which is under tailwind conditions. There's a phenomenal video by Ki Wen if you'd like to learn more about angling your sails. Cargo Run NPC Name Trick When you're given a cargo run, you will have to collect cargo items off an NPC, usually at an outpost. The fastest way to locate this NPC is to observe the first letter of their name, which matches their profession, such as Wendy the Weaponsmith. The tavern and the tool shop can be differentiated because the owner of the tool shop is always a man, whereas the tavern keep is always a whoreman. I mean woman. Beta Crow's Nest Fortress I couldn't find anything about this on the interwebs, but what I did find was an old version of Hidden Spring Keep called Wellspring Island from the Technical Alpha. It seems in the Technical Alpha, every fort island was just a normal island. It's quite cool to see Hidden Spring Keep as it was before the Skellingtons arrived. Sirens were hinted at a long time ago. On Discovery Ridge there are many paintings which imply the existence of an evil sort of mermaid, as opposed to the helpful ones which return us to our ships. I suppose we now know these villainous mermaids to be the sirens. There's also some siren art in the Art of Sea of Thieves book, so the design has existed for the sirens since probably before even 2018. Sea of Thieves Novel and Comics There's a Sea of Thieves novel, you can listen to it for free. It's called Athena's Fortune and it's about the Pirate Lord and Lorena. Some stuff happens. Worth a listen, methinks. Comics too, yeah. It's like books but you can look at pictures too. Developer Cosmetics Rare employees get their own cosmetic sails, featuring the Rare logo to use in the game. The description reads, Sail far beyond the seas to find the tiny Twycross outpost, home of the most scurvy pirates. There's something very wholesome I find about that description. Playable Skeleton Glitch At one point in the game a long time ago, if someone applied the legacy beard and re-logged into the game, they would appear as a skeleton with a mildly green glow. Eye of Reach of the Wailing Barnacle The Eye of Reach of the Wailing Barnacle is a sniper cosmetic which could only be purchased from the Bilge Rats during the Cursed Cruise event. It's no longer obtainable. Tankard of the Damned can see through fog The Tankard of the Damned could be used to see through fog in the past, but this has been patched. Geordie Tommy Tribute Book There's a book in a cave located on Smuggler's Bay. Placed there is a tribute to the work put into the Sea of Thieves Xbox controller by Geordie Tommy an Xbox addict. One thing I read online said Xbox addict passed away until the description of the book was modified. I'm not sure in what way though, or even if this is true. The Ferry is Below the Sea The Ferry of the Damned is located on the map somewhere underneath the Sea Dogs Tavern. This is just the sort of things video games do really. It will be quite far down below the sea, and certainly won't be possible to swim to. I have however been able to hear cannon fire on the Ferry of the Damned a few times. I assume this means someone is firing cannons at the Sea Dogs Tavern. Lightning strikes rock when new ship joins the server. I'm not entirely sure what this means, but I have noticed some lightning striking next to the arena tavern without an accompanying storm, which was apparently a glitch at one time. Maybe this currently indicates a new ship joining the server, but I can't imagine something like that would happen by accident. Costumes don't affect walking sounds. Well obviously they don't. Pretty deep. Okay, second to last level. Let's go chaps. Ferry of the Damned missing cannon. Yep, the ferry is missing a cannon. Why? I, I don't know. Why should I have all the answers? I'm not the one making a Sea of Thieves video. Not my responsibility to find out. Skeleton gunners can't detonate kegs. Let's put this to the test, shall we? Crook's Hollow Ghost. Captain Falcon made a video about how Crook's Hollow is haunted. It's basically like Hero Bro in Sea of Thieves edition. Honestly, the thought that this sinister observer entity could have been watching me whenever I've been on Crook's Hollow sends a shiver down my spine. It's a rather spooky video, but jokes on you, Falcor. Every island is haunted now there's phantoms in the game. Whoa, whoa, what was that? Did you see that? Rewind and enhance. Oh, don't worry, guys, it's just Michael Gove. 2014 prototype. Back in the 2014 prototype, every player in Sea of Thieves was a bean. Yeah, anyway, there's an expensive figurehead you can buy if you want featuring these bean gentlemen. Sword Sound Spawn Camp Strat I would assume this is a strategy for killing someone as soon as they spawn in by listening for them pulling out their sword. I don't want to read any more into it as I don't want to teach people how to spawn camp. Sir Francis Drake and the Golden Hind 
To get a feeling for what it was like to be on the old wooden galleon, the team visited Sir Francis Drake's galleon, the Golden Hind. Which isn't actually the Golden Hind, it's a seaworthy reconstruction located in London on the Thames. The real Golden Hind rotted away and got turned into a chair. Mannequin glitch. Look at the spooky mannequin lady in the picture. That's it, that's the mannequin glitch. Sloop barrels are smaller. Barrels on a sloop are smaller than every other barrel in the game. Wow. The merfolk curse. According to this rhyme in the book Tales of the Sea of Thieves, being a merfolk is a curse transmitted through a bite. According to the text right next to this entry, this is bullshit. The Whispering Chest. The Whispering Chest is a chest concept from the Sea of Thieves art book. Here's a render someone made of it. Damn. Good render, honestly. The Ice Zone. The Ice Zone is an area a lot of Sea of Thieves players want in the game. One stunning concept has been drawn up by Max Maximinamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamnamn
I, I mean, on the occasion you just saw, I took no damage because it was a member of my crew shooting me. But I have to get this footage somehow, eh? Every copy of Sea of Thieves is personalised. This obviously isn't true. Every copy of Sea of Thieves is identical. It's us pirates who personalise our adventures and forge our own paths in the game. This is what makes the game so vibrant and compelling. Unfortunately, whatever adventures you might have, it always ends the same way. We die, humanity dies, and then the universe dies. Everything we do is ultimately completely pointless. So you better do whatever you want and ignore the path that's been set for you by other people. If you haven't noticed, this is the end of the video now. Join my Discord for banter, the six clans that you can pick from, and you're forced to remain in said clan for all the time you're on the server. This encourages tribalism and toxicity towards other clan members. The invite link is in the description. And one more thing. It's likely that this will be my last upload for quite a while. Any uploads I do soon will be edited by my friend Charlie. He edited my arena video, which he did a really good job with. Definitely check that out if you haven't seen it. Unfortunately, I just don't have time at the moment to focus on anything YouTube related. I really just need to focus on work for university. And on that note, thanks for watching all the way to the end, and I'll see you in the next upload.